Hello, and welcome to this edition of Lift Every Voice, a program of the Louisville Branch NAACP through which we seek to keep our community informed as to the civil rights and educational issues that are facing our community. The NAACP has been on the battlefield for more than 100 years fighting in these areas, seeking equal justice, equal education, equal opportunity for everyone, and that is what we're all about. The NAACP, as I've said many times pro in this program, is a all volunteer organization. We have, at least in the Louisville branch, no paid staff, and our work is done through our committees. Committees work very, very hard to bring about action and to address issues and problems that exist within our community. It is through these committees that we are able to do some things. The initial growth of the NAACP membership was through the church. There's a, a symbiotic relationship that has existed from the very beginning of the founding of the NAACP, and it, and it has continued over the years. The roots of religion in the establishment of the NAACP is recorded many places in, in terms of what has taken place. Here in Louisville, for many, many years, we used to have the NAACP Interdenominational Ministerial Co Coalition, which is now a separate organization that, is, that has gone on its own, but is not far from its continued involvement with the NAACP. And so today, what we're going to talk about or talk with is about the Religious Affairs Committee of the NA, of the NA, Louisville Branch NAACP, what it's doing in the community, how those things are being done, and how we're able to do what it is that we do. I'm fortunate today to have my guest to be the Reverend Roosevelt Lightsey Jr. And Roosevelt is, in fact, a minister. You see the Reverend in front of there. Uh, but he is more than just a Reverend. He is a community activist with great involvement in our community. You know, he is an assistant pastor at the Community Baptist Church in the Newburgh community. But his involvement in our community isn't limited to just Newburgh. He is involved in terms of criminal justice reform all across our community. He is a mentor and advocate on behalf of young people across this community. He has been involved with the JCPS alternative schools in terms of working to make certain that those schools don't just warehouse our kids, but they have meaningful impact in terms of their education. Uh, he, of course, has been involved in voting, voting rights registration. Uh, he's overall, he is an individual who's on the move. And the NAACP Louisville branch is fortunate to have him serving as our chair for the Louisville branch Religious Affairs Committee. Roosevelt, welcome. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Burris. I appreciate this opportunity and I'm excited to uh, serve in the capacity of chairman of the Religious Affairs Committee. Okay, so we will just have a general conversation about religious affairs, sure. but also about your, what the things that you're doing in the community uh, as well. So how long have you been involved actively in the NACP itself? I would say that um, my most active participation has been, uh, I guess it was spearheaded uh, during the primary campaign of uh, then candidate Barack Obama for the presidency. I happen to have heard our president, our local chapter president, uh, Ralph Cunningham speaking at an event. And in his presentation, he challenged those present to engage uh, with the NAACP. And I took it as a, a personal challenge and I've been pretty uh, uh, active uh, ever since, so. Yeah. Well, it, you know, it, it, it's, it's good to hear you say that you were you, you got engaged because of what our local president was done in terms of encouraging you to get involved and to make things happen. And that's the way it is with most individuals who are engaged with the NAACP. There's something that triggers that involvement. And once you're involved, it's sort of hard to get away from. But, you know, now you're in charge of the Religious Affairs Committee. And tell me, how do you view your role as the chair of that committee? And how do you see your committee working into the future? <laughs> well, uh, certainly one of the things that uh, in my observation, we who are residents uh, here in Metro Louisville, we're blessed to have 
a synergy of uh, concern uh, in our community. There are a number of organizations that are actively engaged in work to try and improve uh, the life and conditions of our citizens. Um, and um, I have had the blessed opportunity to work with the interdenominational ministerial coalition uh, for a brief period. I served uh, in the uh, capacity of their social um, justice arm. Um, I, was, I was happy to work with them in that capacity. Also, um, in my association with the Jefferson County Public Schools, there have been uh, multiple occasions when local uh, pastors and uh, leaders of the faith community, uh, I've been involved with them working with JCPS. My hope is to uh, bring about a collaborative uh, effort uh, and to make sure that we uh, improve our communication uh, with sister organizations and with uh, the community that we serve. Uh, we must get the word out. We must make room so that more shoulders can be applied to the wheel. Okay. You know, it, it, it's, it's interesting that you say that in terms of getting more groups and organizations working together to do that. Uh, as we talked about the inter interdenominational ministerial coalition and what it is doing in the community and what the NACP, there is a lot of overlap in regards mm -hmm. to what is being done and how that work is being done. Uh, and so you're looking forward to, to, I guess, greater cooperation. Tell me what uh, what areas do you are you, you planning to focus on specific areas you plan to focus on uh, in terms of what we, we, under your leadership of this committee? Certainly, um, areas of particular interest that uh, uh, I feel I've been called to work in include uh, the uh, criminal justice area, uh, the plight and experience of those returning citizens who are returning back to the community, having had periods of incarceration. Um, I, I have a penchant for uh, serving the least of these. So mm -hmm. I certainly would like to see us uh, reach out in that area. Also with uh, uh, Jefferson County Public Schools, as we all know, it's a, such a large uh, organization. There's multiple areas of, of uh, opportunity for uh, enhancement, uh, but I am particularly uh, sensitive to the plight of those students that get in trouble, that make mistakes, that end up being relegated to what uh, one might call the uh, alternative school uh, program uh, or system. Um, as I was informed um, within the last five years or so ago, um, under the prior uh, administration of Jefferson County Public Schools. I was informed then that um, eight out of 10 of the students that are assigned to alternative schools are black. Mm -hmm. And according to their information, 70% of those do not graduate. That has tremendous foreboding impact on our present and our future conditions here in the black community. And uh, so I'd like to see us do something to uh, remember the least of these. And then there are also opportunities for um, more entrepreneurism and uh, preparation in the health fields, um, helping to get our kids ready to live productive lives and participate as productive citizens. Yeah, you got you know there are big challenges that lie ahead in, in terms of, of doing that. You know, in, in addition to the work that you have done in in the JCPS school, you've also been uh, a voice in terms of community violence, uh, things that are that are, that are occurring, and you've worked with different organizations in the community. Tell us about those organizations you work with, uh, and and what their impact has been. Certainly, um, I'm happy to have had some opportunity to work with the uh, No More Red Dots with Dr. Eddie Woods. Um, I've also um, been engaged with the uh, LMPD um, 
community outreach effort in terms of prior to officer involved shootings, uh, there is a call that goes out to certain persons within the community, uh, predominantly faith leaders uh, and other um, persons in the community to come in and have a previewing of those um, uh, camera videos prior to their release to the community and then have discussions over possible impacts and uh, recommendations for strategies to uh, handle uh, those uh, extraordinary events. Uh, so I've had some exposure there. Uh, I also have had opportunity to uh, work with the Juvenile Justice Advisory Council. I serve on that council, mm -hmm. which addresses um, a multitude of uh, juvenile justice issues that are um, taking place in our community. So I've worked with uh, the juveniles as well as the the adults that uh, have returned to our community and that are engaged in criminal activity that might lead to incarceration. So, you know, hear, hearing that, uh, Roosevelt, I guess as it relates to the Religious Affairs Committee, are there expectations that you're going to broaden what, I guess, in, in the past, uh, you know, each committee direction gets determined by its chair. Uh, the chair of the Religious Affairs Committee in the past hasn't necessarily focused on the areas in which you're now talking about. Is it your plan to, to, to pull, one, to pull more members in to your involvement, but two, to be, to be more broadly focused around these kinds of things of which you as a minister and several other faith leaders are already involved in? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I also uh, hope to shine uh, a bit more of the uh, light of attention and awareness on uh, all corners of uh, Metro Louisville. Uh, we certainly uh, give needed and appropriate attention to the plight of uh, our people living in the uh, West End of Louisville. Uh, yet, uh, thanks be to, in no small part, to the work of the NAACP through the years, uh, we live all over Jefferson County, including Newburgh. And as a Newburghian, uh, I, I certainly want to include um, uh, and uh, uh, reach out to the Newburgh area to engage them in the work as well. Um, <clears throat> so, yes, I, I do hope to uh, shine a bit uh, additional light in some areas that perhaps uh, a lot of energy to thus far has not been uh, exerted, but I also want to uh, do what I can to help the um, what's already been established and the work that is going on. There's a lot of work that the local chapter is doing that I was not aware uh, that the local chapter was engaged in. And I was not, uh, the truth of the matter is, and I have to own a, a major part of my um, naivety or my lack of information because I had not sought, I had not uh, made myself available. But once I have been engaged and I'm learning more of the uh, various programmatic thrust of the local chapter, there's a lot going on and we have got to get the word out and share that. Which, which is one of the reasons for this program is getting you here to talk to <laughs> our good. community about what it is we're doing. And you know, it, you know a lot of uh, of the leadership in this community rest in faith leaders and faith leaders are having a big impact. You know, you're out involved in doing the things. So the, uh, Reverend Corey Scholl, who is now a school board member, he's involved. Yes. He was involved with the interdenominational ministerial coalition. He's involved yes. with other organizations who are doing that. You know, as we think about what this religious affairs committee is going to do, one of the questions that, that needs to be asked and probably get asked, people will say, do you need to be a minister to be involved in the Religious Affairs Committee? No. Um, we certainly welcome uh, any and all clergy, uh, certainly as uh, those who have been called to be watchmen and, and placed in uh, positions of leadership, pastoral, um, and or uh, leading in some uh, counseling capacity or therapeutic capacity, that's that's welcome. But also the lay person, uh, 
uh, the persons that, that maybe are uh, not members of a church, but they have a tugging on their <laughs> moral strings that's pulling them to be engaged in trying to make a positive difference in our community. We welcome everybody that has a heart to serve. The most important component is that you have a heart to serve. This working for everybody. And as you have pointed out, uh, there are no paid positions. These are volunteer positions. And, uh, you know, if you, if, if you don't have a heart for it, you won't last long. Okay. So, you know, you, uh, as it's safe to say, we're also as a part of this are reaching out to, to the community, but also reaching out for people to volunteer and get involved with your committee. So in terms of how can people who are listening or see this program reach out to you to get involved with the religious affairs committee? How do, how do they contact you? I would certainly um, like to invite anyone to call the local office and uh, um, leave your contact information there. Um, I also would, uh, uh, I have an email address. It's very, uh, very simple. It's R Lightsey, L I G H T S Y, Jr. J R. R. Lightsey Jr. at AOL.com, um, okay. all small caps. So uh, I think if you would reach out to me th that way, I certainly would be able to uh, get back to you just as quickly as I can and to engage you um, as another team member uh, in this work. Okay. You know, one of the things I mentioned in the introduction is that you're the assistant pastor at Community Baptist Church. Uh, you're a new, uh, you, you know, you're a native of Newburgh. You've been involved in, uh, and Community Baptist Church over the years has been involved in a lot of activities around around Newburgh and around the community. Why don't you talk to me about some of the things that you all have going on at Newburgh, and, because in in some of those things there is an overlap with what the NAACP is doing as well. Thank you. Um, I, as you have pointed out, I am the assistant pastor. Uh, Long story short, in about 1995, uh, the church uh, voted on the recommendation of our pastor that in the event he should retire, become incapacitated or die, that I would be the next pastor of the church. And I have served in that capacity ever since. Um, I've served as the youth minister, but I also served as the vice president of the Newburgh Ministerial Association. We've been engaged in supporting a number of projects uh, one, the Newburgh Ministerial Association uh, adopted uh, Minor Daniels Academy, um, and in its first year of operation, uh, we found that because of our um, relationship with that local school, they were having a problem with the kids coming to school and being cold all day long, and um, they uh, have a dress code there, and so uh, they were giving sweatshirts uh, to the kids, but they had uh, low budget and they didn't have enough sweatshirts. So the uh, minister, Newburgh Ministerial Association took it upon ourselves. All the churches that are participating in the Ministerial Association uh, challenged our parishioners and we went out and purchased uh, sweatshirts and gave them to Minor Daniels uh, for a period of time you couldn't find a gray sweatshirt anywhere <laughs> in the city but that was just a small example of what happens when you have a partnership and engage and loose the powers and the abilities and the heart of the people with a need uh, so that's one area we also had a um oh it's been retired now for a couple of years but we started newberg youth council uh some years back and uh, we wanted to give a voice to the youth in our community. We did a number of things with them. Uh, we taught them uh, what it is to be part of a team, to assume leadership positions. We uh, started and operated a local community garden. We converted a uh, uh, abandoned piece of property into a garden. We grew vegetables. Um, and the vegetables that we grew, we gave away to seniors in the community. Uh, we also had a, a reentry program. Um, and as a part of that reentry program, we established 
a uh, adjunct to that program that we called RING, Reinvestment Neighborhood Group, where uh, families of uh, formerly incarcerated uh, employers, faith community, persons that had a heart to help people get back on track, they all were invited to participate in that program. And we were able to get the ex-offenders working with the at-risk youth. And it was a phenomenal program that worked extremely well for a number of years. Uh, so that's just an example of a couple of things that we have done uh, while we work together. Well, it, you know, it, and it certainly speaks well to the, the choice of our president to put you in charge of the Religious Affairs Committee because you have been a foot soldier in the community doing things, doing things through your church uh, and doing, doing things to various organizations. When you were talking about Manor Daniels Academy, yes, you know, I'm not certain that everybody who's listening to us know what what Manor Daniels Academy is. Yeah, and because you've been involved, sure. won't you t talk to us about what Manor Daniels Academy is or what it's supposed to be? Thank you. Um, I got involved with Manor Daniels Academy uh, a few years back uh, when in the year prior to its establishment, uh, there was information leaking out that they were going to close what was then Kennedy um, Metropolitan School, which was the only alternative school for middle school, uh, middle high school, uh, middle school kids. Uh, and they were going to close Kennedy and merge it with what was then Butchel Metropolitan School, which was a high school uh, alternative program. And they were gonna put these two populations under one roof. Uh, and I recognized that that was um, loaded with uh, hazards. And uh, I uh, wrote a, a letter uh, opposing the idea, the concept to uh, uh, then Superintendent Hargens, had a conference with her and a couple of board members. Uh, she challenged me to assist with uh, Minor Daniels. She agreed to make certain concessions and certain safeguards, put them in place, um, which would allow for the effective and safe operation of that facility. So I agreed to do that, uh, provided she would um, publish the adjustments that she had made. Um, and she did that. And so I worked for the first uh, three, four years at Minor Daniels volunteering. Uh, Minor Daniels has uh, uh, previously uh, housed uh, middle schoolers uh, that are placed in uh, because of behavior problems in the alternative system, as well as a high schoolers that are placed in the um, alternative school system. Um, so the uh, concept, as I understand it, was that this would afford a respite, a time out from their home or composite school um, so that they can make adjustments in their behavior, uh, get back on track and be able to return to their uh, composite or home school. Uh, right. That's the goal. That's the design. It doesn't work for for every uh, youth that's assigned there. Um, but my challenge and my concern is what happens to the youth while they are at this facility, while they're right. at this school. Uh, so uh, that briefly, that's uh, the 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 design of it, the structure of it. And, 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 and Roosevelt, I think it's, it's safe to, to say, you know, I, I can remember coming into the Louisville community when uh, the Mount of Daniels Academy used to be Butchel something. I can't think of their school. And the, the, the word in the community was that students went to, to there to be Butchelized, and which mm -hmm. was a connotation for a very negative environment. And now mm -hmm. it's a more positive environment because of individuals like you in the community who've chosen to get involved and make a real difference. So, you know, that you to be commended for that engagement. Uh, but not only are you engaged in terms of, of things, you know, one of the things we were, were at least working on was uh, you worked on at one point was, in fact, uh, Metro Correction Officers and their, you know, the, 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 the conditions of their employment in terms of making improvements and in changes. So talk a little about that. That's that is true. Um, 
I had uh, opportunity to, um, prior to the uh, pandemic, um, I worked with the uh, mayor's office um, and um, on a couple of, in a couple of areas. One, what was formerly um, the Louisville Metro Detention Center, um, which is a whole nother issue, um, but also the uh, Louisville Metro Corrections, uh, the jail. Uh, I was asked by uh, or invited by um, County Attorney Michael Connell to uh, join in a um, advisory committee uh, for the jail. Um, and one of the things that we did during that period of time was tour the facility. Uh, it was warm. I remember it was uh, in the, probably June or July of that particular year. And uh, there was an issue about moving inmates from the jail to the overflow uh, cells above uh, the police station. And as you, some of you may recall, there were issues with the uh, condition of the facilities above the police station. Touring that place, the crowding, the uh, issues with staffing are huge. Um, at that time, there were uh, pods or cells, if you will, that were uh, structured to house roughly maybe 24 persons, 24 inmates that had 40 and, and uh, sometimes as high as 50 inmates in that area. Uh, so you can imagine in that kind of a crowded circumstance, if one has an issue and that you have a fight that jumps off, then you got a staff that has to work through the other inmates to go in and try and restore order. It's a very unpleasant place. And I will tell you this, it's my hope that we can do all that we can to bring down the, the level of, of angst, the level of anger, the level of violence, the level of acting out and crime because nobody, nobody needs to be incarcerated, especially during COVID. Uh, it's no place we want to be. <clears throat> okay. Well, let me, you know, we're at the end of our time. And as you listen to our guest today talk about his involvement, plans for the Religious Affairs Committee, it's pretty clear that the NACP chose the right person at the right time to be the leader of its Religious Affairs Committee. And so we'd like to thank the Reverend Roosevelt Lightsey Jr. for being with us today and talking about religious affairs, projects that they're gonna be involved in and what's going on. You know, as he, as one of the things that Roosevelt talked about was getting more people involved in the committees of the NACP and specifically the Religious Affairs Committee. But if you're interested in being involved in a, in a NACP committee, you can, all you need to do is reach out to us and, we, and tell us that that's what you wanna do. You can do that by calling the NACP office at 502-776-7608 or by emailing us at louisvillebranch at lounacp.org or by visiting our website at lounacp.org or visiting our Facebook page, which is at Louisville NACP. So there are opportunities for you to get involved and be, and be with us. You can also visit our office, which is at 1245 Catapult Court. Uh, but we need individuals like you and in being involved in that. Again, I'd like to thank Roosevelt Lightsey for his involvement and for the Religious Affairs Committee for being involved with us. And we'd like to thank, thank you and let you know to make real change and impact our community, the NAACP needs members who are dues paying and are willing to work it is only through such action that we're able to lift every voice. Thank you.